From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss podcast secrets that you need to know. Joining us is Todd Cochran, who's the CEO of Blueberry Podcasting, which is a full-service hosting provider with over 100,000 podcasts in their umbrella. So far this week, Todd and I have talked about his podcast growth secrets, and yesterday we talked about how to use a podcast to help your business. Today we're going to wrap up our conversation talking about podcast advertising best practices. All right, here's the last part of my conversation with Todd Cochran, the CEO of Blueberry Podcasting. Todd, welcome back to the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for having me back. Always a pleasure to have you here. I feel like we're graced with podcast royalty. I know that you're working a lot with multiple podcasts, hundreds of thousands of podcasts, and not only helping them grow their businesses, but also there's an advertising component into why people are podcasting. So let's talk a little bit about the advertising medium Why is podcast advertising such a powerful tool and what are some of the best ways to leverage it? The thing about podcast advertising that makes it very unique is the listener has, number one, opted in to listen to that content. They just aren't randomly being subjected to it like you are on the radio. Number two, the host generally drives the authentication of the content, that host endorsement of the advertisement. So what we find is that podcast advertising often delivers many multiple times higher performance than any other type of advertising media. So when a company is thinking about advertising in podcasts, I always tell them the first thing they should do is go after the shows that they already listen to, the ones that they love, the ones that they trust, and use those as maybe the the initial marketing test ground. But I also leave some cautions in that advertising and podcasting is not like radio. Radio, you're getting maybe three or four spots an hour during in the designated time that you've bought. And podcasts, you may be getting one episode a week. So what it takes to generate a lead off a podcast ad is a little more involved than what it is going to come potentially from radio. But there is a completely different strategy in that you can tell a story about a company. You can build upon the advertising message episode or after episode by altered copy that makes the advertisement grow. Basically, that company story grow over time. I'm kind of unique in the space that I believe if you're going to do an advertising buying a podcast, you should buy about 90 days worth of that content. And what you'll normally see when you buy an ad in podcasting is the first two weeks, you're going to kind of be like, oh my goodness, did we spend some money and waste money Whereas in that third week, you see performance coming on on that ad with referrals going all the way out through week 12, 13, 14, and even into 15 after the campaign has already ended because of the way podcasts are listed on demand, not necessarily at the exact time that they're released. So you have to build repetition and getting enough cycles of that ad and that derivatives of that ad being heard along with a good call to action. Podcast advertising, if you have the budget to buy on a wider scale, can drive significant volume to your website. But I always tell companies that are getting involved in podcast advertising, start with a handful of shows that you already love and trust. What I'm hearing from you is a couple of different things. First off, when you think about podcast advertising, consider the medium, right? Consider the format of the advertising. It's spoken word, and generally you're getting 30 to 60 seconds of an advertisement. 30 to 60 seconds might sound like it's not a lot of time, but think about how long it takes for you to consume an advertisement on Facebook. 
Is it a tenth of a second? You're thumbing through and maybe you're seeing a brand impression. Well, there's a big difference between that experience and between listening to a 30 to 60 second ad, whether it's on the radio or in a podcast. Audio advertising is proven to be an incredibly powerful medium for delivering not only a great impression, but also a complex story. You can actually tell a story in narrative fashion. Now, I think one of the things that gets complicated for people that are experimenting in podcasting is how much media do I need to buy? How many impressions do I need? What's the reach? What's the frequency for me to start seeing business results? You mentioned your strategy of buying a show for 90 days. You're running a three-month campaign in a podcast. Does that mean that all podcasts are created equal and there's no difference between a million impressions and 10,000 impressions from smaller to bigger shows? How do you think about finding the shows based on not only how long the duration is, but the size and impressions you need? Oftentimes we see shows that have a more medium-sized audience have higher performance than shows that have a bigger audience. And the reason for that is, is the shows that have a medium or smaller size audience, they're more intimate with that audience. And those listeners are more than more likely to act upon the ad. If you think about your show being advertised in, let's say, Joe Rogan, you're going to get this huge, massive, massive reach of a lot of people. But how effective is that ad going to be? I always think that you need, again, to be decisive in the shows that you pick and make sure that that show is reaching the demographic of audience that you want. Podcasters are pretty good now if they've done their homework and knowing who their audience persona is. So you should be able to ask a podcaster who is the makeup of your audience that meets the demographic of the audience you're trying to reach and the persona of your audience. You should do very, very well. But again, I think it really depends on the host, depends on the authenticity of the host read. The creative has a lot to do with it as well, making sure the creative is good. And again, Going back to that call to action, having a clear to call to action that's easy to remember. Not all podcasts are created the same. And I hear you, we're seeing the same thing in all influencer marketing. I think most people think influencer marketing. My head personally goes to Kim Kardashian, the macro influencers with these giant followings. They're wonderful for huge reach, but making a true impact when your audience is that big is really hard. You get more focused audiences when you niche down into smaller shows. But then you struggle with reach and frequency. And there's also the other component of what should you be paying for podcast advertising? I've heard that the average CPM in a podcast is 20 to $50. I don't see the value of selling podcast advertising for a niche show like ours at that low of a rate. We're closer to $100 CPMs. And that's even to me, you know, I struggle with why we'd be selling our inventory for $5,000 a month. We could probably get a larger premium, but... I want to be reasonable relative to people's CPM expectations. How do you figure out what you should be paying for a podcast? And when you're thinking about niche versus macro, how should those rates change? Well, obviously, niche is much more valuable. The example I often give is the neurosurgeon that is doing a podcast to neurosurgeons. That particular was a use case that I actually experienced myself where that podcaster got $20,000 an episode. The more broad the topic of the audience, then you're probably going to be down in those 20 and $25 CPM levels. And then there's everything in between. So again, though, in the end, the, what my particular goal has always been is to deliver value. The reason I've been able to hold a specific sponsor since 2005 on my own personal podcast is I deliver the value that they expect every month for the compensation that I earn. And it's been predetermined. So it's often important if you're going to buy advertising on a show to have a realistic expectation of what that ROI is going to be. If you're spending $30 to acquire a new customer in other mediums, you would expect that the acquisition cost in podcasting would be lower. So if you have an idea what your acquisition cost is, you're going to pretty well know right off the get-go if you're getting value for that as you're spending money on those campaigns and you can exclude shows that aren't performing and spend more money in those that are. But oftentimes the content creators will often overvalue their content and then you as the buyer of that have to determine if that value that they're asking for is going to deliver the ROI that you're looking for. So I think it's a buyer's preference but again, I've always said I'd rather have an advertiser with me for a year than a month and take a little less money as a content creator. So 
I think it all depends on the scope of the deal, and no single deal is the same. And it goes back into the attribution problem we talked about throughout this week of when you are doing podcast advertising, if you don't have a clear call to action, if you don't have a vanity code, some sort of a way to understand how the ad is performing, if you're not asking your customers how they heard about you, how are you going to be able to evaluate a channel where people are consuming the media through their ears, not by tapping on their phone? You have to think about what you're trying to accomplish in advance before you engage in your podcast advertising strategies. Because even if you pick the greatest shows in the world and you nailed your media buying and you got great rates, if you don't know how to evaluate it or you don't have a plan in place, you're never going to know if it works. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Tom Cochran, the CEO of Blueberry Podcasting. If you'd like to get in touch with Todd, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter. His handle is Geek News. That's G-E-E-K-N-E-W-S. Or you can visit his company's website, which is Blueberry.com, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y.com. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening to this podcast, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even send us your topic suggestions or your marketing questions, which we'll answer live on our show. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can contact me directly. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S. SHAP. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy.